Welcome to the drawing board. Come on. Can you just throw it in the chat? Come on, say good morning. It's so good to see you. You guys jumping on a call with me 7 a.m. in the morning. Good morning to you and, and to all of our YouTube, all of our podcast folks. Come on. Thank you so much for joining the drone board. Come on. We we are super excited. Matter of fact, we for our YouTube and, and our podcast folks, come on. We we just came out of worship. We were come on. And I love this song, guys. I give myself away. I, I think that is so profound. I think that speaks even to our moment right now. Come on. How, how many of you, come on, is that your worship posture this morning? I give myself away, God. I, I, I'm here to worship you. My, Come on, I love the lyric. It says, my life is not my own. I, I, I'm here to worship you, my Lord and Savior. And I, I just think that's profound. And even as we're in this series, come on, how, how many of you just been enjoying this series in Money Woes? Come on, where we just concluded um, our, our Money Woes series this past Sunday, come on, on the, uh, on the 25th, and it has just been a profound series. I, I, I really believe God spoke even yesterday um, that this series has been such a fresh, he kept using that word, fresh, revelation of what God is doing in people's lives. And, 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 be, and we, we kind of talked about it even in our panel discussion yesterday. It's not that we're giving, it's not that God is giving new information. It, it's, it's actually that God is just giving it in a fresh way. And I think that's, I think that's profound. I think that's very speaking to our moment. And can we just show some love real quick? Come on, from our panels. If you didn't see the message yesterday, come on, can we just shout out Rachel Knapp and, 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 and Erica Jones and, and, and Sean Redden. Come on, family, show some love to those three individuals because they crushed the panel discussion yesterday. If we could just show some love in, 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 in the chat because I think they did a phenomenal job of just and you guys get to hear from myself every Sunday. And I, hey, maybe you're tired of hearing from PA or and you get to hear from Pastor Brenda and you get to hear from other people on our team. But I thought it would be pretty incredible to bring some other friends. And I think that's what's profound about um, our celebration family. There, there's so many awesome voices throughout the community. Man, I, I'm so grateful as a lead pastor that, that I don't even have to carry the weight myself. Like there's so much fruit throughout the congregation. God is just not speaking to the pastor. No, that's that's not this community. No, this community is all about partnership. This community is all about, hey, come sit at the table. There's a, there's a seat for you and you can use your voice. And I thought that was just pro uh, prophetic, really, yesterday to, to have others to come along and share their perspective around generosity, share their perspective around biblical principles. And, and, and today for our time today um, in the drawing board, I, I want to actually kind of recap a little bit. And then I'm going to go back into last weekend and talk about what we talked about a few uh, weeks ago. And then I, I want to open it up to the room to kind of recap this series. Hey, what what is God speaking to you? And, and here's the reason why here's the reason why I want to recap from a pastor perspective. If, if a pastor is truly gauging a win on a Sunday it's really, it should not be from the posture of how well did the pastor preach. I think that's the wrong gauge. I'm not driving home and say, hey, that was a win because I preached good. No, no, a, a true win on a Sunday is, is how are the people responding to what God just said? And this is why I say I think this series has been very profound because I've been seeing, I've been witnessing people responding to what God is saying. Even yesterday, come on, from our panel, people are coming up. Hey, 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 I need help with my finances. I'm being vulnerable. Can, can you come alongside of me? That's people responding, taking the next step, taking the initiative. And that's what it's all about, about the, the, uh, um, God's gospel. It's, it's us responding to the invitation. That's the true gauge of a win. And, and I, I, I want to kind of go in because, man, we, we, we talked about some incredible things and, um, yesterday on, on our panel discussion. And the first one, the first one I thought as we begin to kick it off, I, I directed this question to Sean. 
and we talked about do you do do you truly believe in and in, 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 in when it comes to your finances that 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 God that you would truly steward and it belongs to God. I'm trying to frame it up the right way. And and does your finances belong to you or does your finances actually belong to God? See family, this is a mindset shift that I believe that God is teaching us here. Yes, we're, we're, we're you're going to continue to, to hear me say this. When it comes to your life, we just worship. To, I give myself away. To, 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 I, my life is not my own. To you, I belong. Matter of fact, scripture says it this way that we have been born, we, we have, I mean, we, we have been, been, we have been bought with a price. <laughs> When we give ourselves to Jesus, our life is not our own. Our money, come on, somebody. My my time is not my own. Come on, somebody. Yeah. My, uh, my money is not my own. Matter of fact, I don't even want my mind. I want I want Jesus to have my mind. Can can we put that in the chat this morning? Because when I'm in control of my mind, my thoughts are running wild. When I'm in control uh, of my mind, there's always intrusive thoughts coming. I, I need to give my thoughts, my mind. To, to God so that he can guard it and he can control it. My, this is, doesn't belong to me anymore. I am a stewarder. God has entrusted you to actually steward and manage your finances. And when we, be, and when we catch it, because we can say it, <clears throat> we can say it, but I believe it's a beautiful thing when we actually walk it out. And that's the temptation. That's the test. That's the pressure because there are going to be instances in your life where you want to be in control. Come on, all of my, all of my wanting, got to be in control. People just begin to flicker your fingers and and and, and throw your hands in the air and wave them side to side like you don't care. <laughs> like the, for all of us who, who who just have to be in control, we just have to have it this way. Got to move it this way. We got to do it this way. And 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 God is saying no, no. When you're part of my kingdom, the king is in control. When you're a part of my governance, the king is in control. And, and, and that's the submission. Ah, yeah, come on. That, that's the submission that God order us in, that he wants us to submit to him. But he gives us a choice. And that's what I want to, that, that, I think this is what we're going to close out this series, even on, in a drawing board. This is all through love. God gives us the choice to love him this way. Yes. He, 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 it, this is not, no, we're not under the law anymore. We're under grace and grace teaches us this. This is a choice on how you want to actually love God. This is a choice on how you actually want to give your offering. This is a choice because here, if it's no choice, it's no love. Yeah. If it's no choice, that's not true. It without any choice or decision that's actually not true love. Can I say it this way? Come on, I, I love living here in the United States. Come on, we travel all uh, all over the world. Come on, missions, trip, or even vacation. I, I appreciate living in the United States of America. But, but hear me when I say this, Uncle Sam does not give me a choice <laughs> on the first and the 15th. Come on, there's no choice. I, I don't get to choose. If my taxes are not going to go out of my account or not, are, are, are you following me? There's, there's no choice here. And God is saying, I, I'm giving you a choice, Anthony, because I love you. I want you to come to me as a cheerful giver. I, I want you to live a life with such a posture that this is not, I'm not snatching it out of your hand. You are coming to my altar and giving it as a cheerful giver. Man, I, that's the relationship that God wants with us. So as we're talking about this and, 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 and we're unpacking it because God wants you to be prosper. He, uh, he wants you to walk in prosperity. I believe yesterday, Rachel did an awesome job with breaking this down. No, no, we, 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 the scripture says that, that in Jeremiah, it says, for I know the plans I have for you. Come on, plans to prosper you. See, a lot of times, family, I, I, I have to process this in my mind as well, because sometimes the plans that God sets out for us, there are times when I'm in the process of that plan, and it seems as though that I'm losing. 
And it seems as though that I'm not gaining traction. And it seems as though that th there's no progress that, 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 that I can measure. That, and, and when so when I'm looking at my life and I begin, and this is why comparison is, is a thief in your life, because you begin to look to the left and the right. And you begin to gauge and you begin to look at other people and see how they are measuring and moving in their life. And hear me when I say this, we, you, you cannot gauge your race on by, on by somebody else's race. You cannot gauge your finances uh, around somebody else's finances. You cannot gauge your career path based on somebody else's career path. Because if we're walking according to God's plan, there are going to be seasons when God is going to propel us. There are going to be seasons where God is going to ask us to sacrifice. And sometimes sacrifice does not feel good. But I'm, I, I'm learning even more through the scriptures that sacrifice actually propels us into the future. Sacrifice actually releases the blessing. See, this is God's culture. And this is God's kingdom. And, and, and he's always counterculture because culture, you know, the worldly culture would teach us anytime you sacrifice, that's a subtraction. But God's math is completely different. God's math is after the multiplication. So, so as I'm setting this, framing this up, what is it in your life right now that God is actually calling you to sacrifice? Because the sacrifice actually le leads to a prosperity lifestyle in my mind, in my soul, in my well-being. Come on, even going to the gym. Come on, anybody going to the gym today? You may not feel like it. <laughs> you may be at the gym right now, but that is a sacrifice that is going to reap the reward. And so when we're living out this principle, and this is a principle, this is a principle in the life. Whatever you sow, you're going to reap. So, and but God doesn't give you back the seed. He gives you back the harvest. He gives you back the tree to actually plant even more. And I think that's very, I think that's very profound because sometimes family, if you're like me, we're measuring, man, God, this sacrifice does not feel like I'm winning right now. I, I really feel like I should be more ahead in life right now. And, and I'm telling you, you cannot beat God with giving. Mm. You can never outgive God. God already did the biggest giving. That's the one sacrificed by his only beloved son, Jesus. God so loved that he gave. And through his giving, we have an eternal relationship with him. And through his giving, we're actually able to walk out this life. And we give because God gives. We don't give because of the outcome. We give because God gave. And now because God has gave, we're walking out obedience. Can I teach you this way, family? The outcome is not the reward. The reward is coming from you being obedient to your father. Mm. A lot of times we measure, we, 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 we measure the way that we sow in the seed based on the outcome of what has been produced from the sowing of the seed. No. No, 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 that's, that, 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 that's a false perspective. And here's why, because a lot of times we can sit in seasons of waiting for something to be produced and God can actually release it in a different way, form or fashion. So now you're, you're, you sowed a apple seed, follow me. And now you're, you're waiting for the apple tree to be produced. And, and sometimes God doesn't work like that. So sometimes, God, you can sow an apple seed and it can come up in your life as an orange tree. Are you are you following me? Because God is in control of the reproducing. That's what I'm getting to. And if you if we stay so if we stay if we stay so connected to the outcome and waiting for the outcome to actually look like this, I'm telling you, God would bring blessings in your life in a way that you never, you never would thought you were looking for it to come in one way and God showed up in another way. Is any somebody put amen in the chat on that? And, and see, th this is the same, this is the same context that even as we get closer to Easter and <laughs> Resurrection Sunday, come on, they were waiting for the king to ride in on a horse, but Jesus showed up on a donkey. 
and Jesus showed up right on their doorstep, the very thing that they have been waiting for, the very thing that they have been praying and waiting for, the Messiah is here, the Messiah is coming, and they're looking around, and where is he at? He's right underneath your nose, and you don't even know it. And because God can show up wrapped in a different gift. And this is why we have to stay connected to him and not stay connected to our preference on how we believe it should show up in our life. And God is saying, just sow the seed and let me handle the outcome. If you stay connected to me, I'll show you how the blessings show up. It may show up and it may show up in time. It may show up in peace. It may show up in money. It may show up in relationship. It may show up in the next generation. Come on. And so, so we're not connected to the outcome. We're connected to the source. Come on, God. Yes. And as long as I'm connected to the source, everything going to be all right. Come on. Everything going to be okay. I don't know why the sound just popped in my head. <laughs> uh, everything is going to be all right if I'm connected to the source. And so last Sunday, um, we, 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 we got into a good, a good message, I, I really believe, uh, talking about the tithe. Yeah. And, and, and I, I, I thought it was profound. I, I really believe that it was fresh uh, revelation. And, and we, we, we brought it up even yesterday in our panel discussion. And, and, and God, God began to show me some interesting things. And really years ago, and I, I taught on it a little bit um, last Sunday about the principle of the tithe. Not, not, not just in the, not just in the, the whole context of the ten percent, but actually getting down to the core of it, and 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 that's what I think is profound about the tithe. I, I really do. Is sometimes we could get caught up in, 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 in is is this man's logic? Is this man's um, um governance? Is this man? You know, this is actually this is a life principle, not connected to the church. And can I teach you? And, and, and in a few Sunday, I I felt I felt God say, "Hey, uh, Anthony, stomp on some bad teaching. <laughs> Just stomp on some. There been some bad teaching out here, even to the degree of I'm, I'm hearing pastors preach on that the tithe and salvation is connected. No, 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 my friend. No, it's not. It, it, it's not connected to if you tithe or not. You're still going to heaven, my friend. <laughs> this is by choice." This is by unlocking the greater. And this is the beautiful thing. Like I said before, the tithe is greater than the law. It is a life principle. We can see through scriptures all the way back to the Garden of Eden. And as I set this up, here's the beautiful thing. As we see this throughout God's love story, which is the Bible, we see that in order, in order for, 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 for something to be redeemed, Something needs to be sacrificed. This, this is God's, this is in God's story. This is a Genesis. So when you hear me say Genesis, this is something from the beginning. And we can see it play, we can see it play out through all throughout the throughout scriptures. In order for something to be redeemed, in order, something has to be sacrificed. So we say it in Genesis. We say it all the way up into the gospels. Jesus was sacrificed so that you can be redeemed. This is God's principle. And the tithe fits right underneath that. This is God's principle. The tithe, the core of the tithe fits right in that. In order, in order for, in order for the, the, the 90 to be redeemed, the 10 needs to be sacrificed. The sacrifice unlocks the, the, the sacrifice unlocks the flow so that the 90 can be blessed. Because in order for something to be blessed, God has to redeem it and God has to put his hands on it. So you can go do whatever you want to do with the 100. But I learned in my life that 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 I don't want a, 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 a 100 curse. I'd rather have a 90 blessed. Come on, somebody. In order for God to actually bless it, we actually have to release it. And God is saying, I'll bless the 10. But when you release it to me, now I'm getting ready to bless the 90. And when I bless the 90, when, when, when God put his hands on it, come on. When God puts his hands on it, he begins to multiply. So, so we, went into, we went into the garden of Eden. 
And we know about the tree of knowledge, the good and evil. That God said, hey, 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 Adam, you can have more. You have more than enough. You have all this, all this God and out there. And I'm telling you, you go break down the God. I probably need to teach on that one day. Just the, just the, the powerfulness of, of how, how the garden was set up. The different streams that came in that, that fed them. And oh man, yeah, I, I, I got to teach. I'm gonna get caught up on. I'm, I'm gonna teach it one, um, one, one day. It's just so powerful, and I think it's, I think it connects even to our financial income. If you actually study how these streams came in and it fed their well-being, and I, I, I'll teach on that on, on, on one day. But, but he said, hey, you have more than enough out there. But I don't, don't touch this. This is set apart. This is for me. And God is saying, God doesn't need the tree. He's God. <laughs> he, he doesn't need the, the tree. He sets it up to test their heart. He sets it up. He puts a test in place in order to reveal the heart. But here's the thing. A lot of times we look at it as God is just testing us, but the test works back and forth. The test is here to reveal the heart. The heart inside of you and the heart inside of God. And when we and when we pass the test, it shows God that our heart is connected to him. And when we pass the test, it, it shows it shows the heart of God that God said, hey, I will always bless you. I will always keep you. I will always give you more than enough. So so he sets it apart. This is in a garden of Eden. And so we can see this play out. We can see this play out through scriptures, even as I said, even earlier in John 3:16, that God that God so loved that he gave Jesus was the tithe. Mm. That Jesus, could it be that Jesus was the tithe so that you can be redeemed? And so as we begin to unpack this, I, I think that because a lot of times, and we we, we kind of joked about this through the series. We kind of joked about this through the series. It's it's around trust. It, 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 I believe our stewarding our finances according to biblical principle comes down to trust. Man, God, do I really trust you at this? Man, man, God, can can, can I really take you at your word? That's what I really believe it is. And that's where I really believe God is challenging us. He's been challenging me to go great. He's been challenging the Vaughn household to, 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 to go up or not. So uh, trust me, your pastor is right there with you because God is stretching us. And, and God said, do, do you really trust me at that level? Yeah, yeah you've, been, you've been swimming down here in two feet. Yeah, your, your knees are not even wet with God yet. You're, you're in the baby pool and God is saying, you no, know, swim out a little bit deeper. But God, I never swam in 15 feet before. But I, I, I have only I have only experienced or have been exposed to this level of swimming with you. Now you're calling me to swim out a little bit deeper. And here's the thing. You would never know if you can swim in 15 feet if you don't never if you don't never pour out a little bit deeper. And this is where God is doing. He's taking you out further. He's taking you out deeper to show you that what he can do, to show you what he has in his house, to show you that he's the God that will never leave you, that he will never forsake you. He will show you. He said, test me at this, that I will open up a window and bless you. But you will never know that God can bless you at that level if you don't ever swim out to 15 feet. This is your season. Hear me when I say this. This is your season to step away from the shore in your finances and trust God at a deeper level. To trust God to manage better. Man, God, I, I, I want to manage at your at, at, at the capacity that you have called me to. See, this is powerful because as, as I get ready to shift right here for our time, we've been saying this, and I wanna I want to say it again so so that you know it because. It's not a vision issue. It's not a money issue. We have to prepare for more. We have a management issue. And we talked about this. We talked about it because what is the plan? God is all about, God is all about spirit and strategy. God, God, God will show you the vision. 
He, he, he will show you the, he will show you what you're going after. He will show you the passion. He will show you on how to, uh, this is what we're going after to, to accomplish. He will give you the Habakka. Come on, write it down, make it clear so that you can run, but also that's the plan. It's a both. So what's the plan right now? What, what's the plan? Begin to begin to open up your notepad if you haven't yet and begin to write down a plan. And here you say, PA, PA, I, I, I don't know how to write the plan. Guess what? You're part of the right community that can come alongside of you, can walk with you, and, and actually help you map out a plan. And here's the beautiful thing about the plan as I get ready to, to close out because this is where this is where we have to be vulnerable before one another. We have to actually open up. And we talked about this yesterday about, about coming alongside because uh, to be honest, in a lot of our families, if this is not your family, then praise God. But just through I know from, from counseling people and walking along with people, uh, sometimes we're raised in families where we have not been exposed to how, how, how the generations before us steward their finances, how they actually overcame trouble. The, the the obstacles that they because a lot of times they they kept it away from the kids they kept it away from the, the family and the struggles and so so a lot of times you're learning this on your own for the first time <laughs> and that's where you have to give yourself grace stop beating yourself down that you're learning this at the first time and that's for a 20 year old that's on a call that's for the 40 year old that's on a call right now maybe you haven't been exposed to better and you will only elevate to the level of what you have been exposed to. So you're trying to you're, you're, you're trying to do better, but you haven't exposed yourself to better. You have to expose yourself to better in order to be transformed. This is why we need Jesus in our life, because Jesus is here not to just not to just teach us. Jesus is here to transform us in order to be transformed in life. You need to be exposed to better. That's, this is why I love celebration. We have great people that can that can come alongside of you, and you can be vulnerable, and now you can be exposed to better. God has better for you, my friend. God, God, God has better for you, my friend. I I, I, I want to share this real quick uh, as I as I get ready to, to get ready to close out because I think it's very powerful uh, that, that 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 God would actually. He, 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 it's all through relationship. It's all through relationship. And, and as we begin to close out, even yesterday, talking about our financial journey, man, I, I, I just continue to see God move in my, in, in me and Pastor Brenda's life. As I said, even a couple of weeks ago, man, we got Murray young. Man, we, we're, we're 38, right? We're 38. We'll be celebrating 19 years of marriage. Uh, coming up in November, come on, 20 years right around the corner, babe. And, and we got Murray young and, and we got Murray young. And then we turned around and, and had two kids young. I mean, we're babies having babies <laughs> and, and, and we're just walking according to God's plan in, in our life and really trusting God at a level of obedience, to be honest, was probably very mature at that age. We, we, we sacrificed a lot and say, Hey, we, we're going to honor God and, and get Murray and, and serve the church. We had other really great opportunities in our life to actually explore and, and probably make some good money, to be honest. But God called us to this. And so we trusted God with our with, with, with the call that we, we heard from God. And, and like I said, we're, we're young. And we, we, we had young kids young. And to be honest, according to worldly um, culture, there's no reason why we should have been generous with our life. There's no reason why we 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 should have been been serving at the degree that we were serving. We were young. We had kids. We had responsibilities. But God kept calling us to live a generous life. And I and I'm I'm being honest. We we wasn't making that much money. I'll be transparent. Your your boy your boy was when we got married. I was making eight dollars and fifty cent. Come on, put that in the chat. Pastor Brendan did not marry me for my money. I know that for a fact because I ain't had none. <laughs> and I'm telling you, like, I, I, our story is so orthodox. When, when we sit in counselors and people at, uh, sit with other people counseling them in premarital, 
and people say, hey, what's your story? I always start with this. Hey, don't follow this model uh, because this was this is our story. This is our your boy ain't had no money. No, you need some money, sir. So go 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 get go get your money up a little bit. But but we 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 didn't have any money, and God just kept calling us to serve, kept calling us to be generous. Even got to the point where God began to challenge us in the tithe. And, and as I shared the story um, a couple of Sundays ago, man, somebody blessed us with a car. I mean, we were traveling to church on a train and a bus just to get to church. And we're still serving and serving the house and, and seeing God move. And God turned around and told us to bless somebody else with, with the car. And like, man, God, like, okay, we, we're doing good now. Like, but, but God just kept, he just kept moving in, in, in our life. And you're like, why, why, why are you sharing all of this, Pastor Anthony? I'm sharing all of this because you have a story, my friend. What's your story? You can, you can pause right now and you can see God's thumbprint all over your life. He's been good to you. He's been great. If God doesn't do anything else, trust me, he has did more than enough. And, and, and so even in this stretch right now, and it's, it's a stretch, been praying. One of the things I've been praying all for your life is the spirit of fear. And even through this season of feeling pressed by fear, God is still good. God is still great. What you're going through is, a, is not a life sentence. It's a season that's going to prepare you to the next. He's been good. He's still good. I, I need you to keep saying that to yourself so that you can drain out the noise of the other voice. Keep saying that, God, you're still good. To, to, to you, I give myself away. Keep pouring yourself out before God. Here's why, because God will always pour into you. So as, as I get ready to close, I, 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 I want to pray it out, and then we're, we'll begin to open it up for our, 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 to the room here for our folks online. I, I got a few questions, uh, but I, I want as we're closing this series out, here's what I want to pray. I want to pray that God will continue to rebuke the spirit of fear off of your life. So, Father God, we thank you. We honor you for this time, even right now. And as we as we conclude this series on money woes, Father God, we thank you for your blessing. We thank you for your teaching. We thank you for your just the way that you have anointed us in this season with fresh revelation to walk according to your plan. And God, we, we pray that you will continue to give us the strength, give us the guidance. Father God, we, we ask right now, your word says to ask for wisdom and you will give wisdom. So we ask for wisdom according to your plan on how we should structure our life to be generous, to walk according to your will. We ask for wisdom on how to balance and manage our finances. We ask for wisdom on how actually to walk according to, to the principle of the tithe. We, we ask for wisdom on, on how to be vulnerable before one another so that true healing can take place, healing in our hearts, healing in, in, in our finances. We ask that, we, we ask for wisdom that you will show us different people who that we can partner with. I'm praying for business leaders right now, even, Lord God, that you would give them a level of wisdom, Lord God, on, in this season on who to partner with and who not to partner with, Lord God. We're praying for favor right now, Lord God, that even that we pray, been praying out in number six, that the Lord will bless us and keep us, but he will also, Heavenly Father, you said that you would give us favor, so we're praying for favor right now. We're praying that our palms will stay open, wide open, and we will live a life not with, with hands closed, but with palms open. Palms open to serve you how you want to be served. Palms open that you can come and go as you please to take what belongs to you to bless somebody else so that you can multiply so that it can benefit and impact your kingdom. Whatever you want to do, Lord God, we are here to give ourselves away. Teach us in this season on how to pour out so we can be positioned to be poured in by you. We pray all of this in the matchless name of Jesus Christ. Come on, somebody say amen. Amen, amen, amen.